after I started work in 1997 in mental health. So before that I'd worked in catering and then I just wanted to get out of the specific job I was doing because they were making some changes, I don't like change, so I ironically forced change upon myself. I got a job working in mental health. I was doing that for a while and then still studying hypnosis on the side, still following my interest in hypnosis. And then in 2001, the opportunity arose where I was able to take my first hypnotherapy diploma to become a practitioner. So I, I became a hypnotherapy practitioner in 2001, started seeing clients in 2001 under the banner of the Sussex Hypnotherapy Centre and I was using a local therapy centre to see clients in. And then around 2003-2004ish I started teaching various things to do with hypnosis. Uh, initially basic things, so I would teach self-hypnosis classes, I would teach things like how to overcome phobias, so I'd do like group phobia treatment sessions, I was teaching all sorts of courses for people who wanted to overcome different problems as well as teaching people who wanted to learn things like hypnosis or self-hypnosis. And then in 2007 I started teaching a hypnotherapy diploma that I'd got accredited with the General Hypnotherapy Standards Council. Uh, and so I was teaching my diploma from 2007 until 2019 and, and I decided I wasn't going to teach it anymore. And I still continue to teach my online courses. I've got about 15 e-courses teaching hypnosis therapy, teaching about parenting and teaching about autism and meditation. And I've also written over 30 books including books on hypnosis, therapy, self-help, autism, parenting, meditation, bedtime stories, uh, non-fiction books, so a whole range of different books. One thing that's a bit different about the way I perhaps teach to many other trainers, and definitely, for example, I've done a lot of hypnotherapy training over the years for continued professional development. I did my first diploma I attended in 2001. I attended a couple more diplomas in the first two or three years where I would just attend different diplomas by different companies. 2004 I did an 18 month long hypnotherapy diploma. Uh, 2007 I did another year long diploma. I've done many weekend and four day hypnotherapy training courses that I've attended throughout all of this since 2007 I've continued most years up until about 2018-2019 to attend training courses that are over normally a weekend or two weekends and what I've noticed is that at least in everything I've attended they always teach hypnosis in a different way round to how I teach it so I think of my way of teaching as being from the deepest level up. So if you attend a live training with me, as anyone who has done will be aware, I have every student hypnotizing each other within 15 minutes of attending the course. So the course will start and I will introduce myself, I'll do all the safety things like where the fire exits are, doing the structure of when the brakes will be, etc. All, all that sort of stuff. That'll take about five minutes. Then I'll talk a little bit about myself and say, you know, thank you all for being here, etc. And then I'll say, okay, we're gonna have you do some hypnosis with each other. And I'll get a volunteer up and they'll sit next to me and I'll say, okay, what I want you to do is just in a minute, you'll pair up and you'll sit opposite the person uh, that you're paired up with. And all I want you to do is hypnotize that individual over say five minutes without any training. So what you're going to do is have a goal of the person being hypnotized and I describe that what you want is them to be relaxed and focused on what you're saying and just engaging with you. So I'm not giving huge amounts of information that's going to be covered later 
in this training. I'm just trying to give the students a quick overview. I say, so you've got a goal, and all you're going to do then is observe the person and use whatever observations you see towards that goal. So whatever they do is the correct thing for that individual in front of you to be doing towards becoming hypnotized. And then I do a demonstration, say for example like this, and then I hypnotize the person next to me. And I say, okay, pair up and do it. And frequently students are a bit nervous, think I've never done hypnosis before in my life, this is a bit scary. But very quickly they crack on, they do it, they notice success. And then when they come back to the group after about 15 minutes, so five minutes each way, plus a bit of time for them to chat while they're doing their five minutes each way, and then a couple of minutes for them to get settled back in the room again before I start talking, and they'll all be saying, yeah, that was incredible, I didn't even know I could hypnotize anyone, I haven't learned any hypnosis yet. And there are a number of reasons why when I teach live, that's how I teach. One of the main ones is that if I teach that way round, then students don't get hung up on am I saying this right? Am I doing this right? Should I be using that language pattern here? This language pattern there? Should I be structuring this in this way or that way? They get hung up on the technicalities when they've had a little bit of training. So what I want is for people to be hypnotizing in a very raw way and then everything that comes after that on the training is about refining what you've learned, not about teaching you to go and do something the next day or two days later. So they, I know and they know they can already do hypnosis with no other skills, but obviously there's going to be exceptions where people are a little awkward, people don't respond quite as expected. So everything after that is, these are skills to help you just do it better. And so that's what I teach. I teach from the deepest level up from that point on. So here it's online and so I can't have you all pair up and do that in that way like I would normally. But I can still do everything I do after that point which is to teach from the deepest level upwards. So what I mean by that is to teach you all the underlying principles, all the kind of the way it works and what you should be observing for. All that stuff that I said that Paul McKenna documentary taught me about hypnosis being about observation and using those observations. Teach you from there and then later on in the course teach you to gradually refine it. So teach you things like language patterns and various kind of inductions. So the idea is that when you learn it this way round you can do hypnosis with literally no structured induction. You don't have to pick up a book read a script, you don't need scripts or anything like that, and you have the confidence that you know you don't need those things. You haven't got hooked on those things early. So I mentioned about doing a diploma in 2001. My first ever hypnotherapy practitioner diploma was essentially that I was told, here are the scripts you use to do hypnosis, here are the scripts you use to treat different conditions like smoking or whatever it happens to be, practice on each other, now go out there and do it with real clients. And it was very much about get yourself as many scripts as you can. And that felt kind of weird that if I went to a therapist, I thought that the therapist's job was to know how to help me, not for them to read to me because I can read myself. And so if it's all about just the reading, why don't they just publish the scripts so that I can buy the scripts audio record the scripts and then listen back to myself and that would be cheaper, my logic was, that would be cheaper than me paying to sit opposite somebody who's going to read a book to me. And so that seemed like a really weird way to do it, but in 2001 that's what I learned. In the next few hypnotherapy diplomas that I took, that's exactly what they taught. I did a whole bunch, maybe a dozen or more, distance learning diplomas from multiple companies. They were all identical. They all taught in the same way. Here's a bunch of scripts, read them to your client. Some of them included, here's how to write scripts to read to your client. But none of them talked about focusing on the client. It wasn't until 2004 when I did the 18 month 
diploma that that taught you don't need scripts it's all about doing therapy and therapy is done with a client not by reading to a client so many courses especially around hypnosis teach techniques but they don't really teach about why something's working in the first place so they don't teach you to be able to do unscripted therapy or hypnosis with people they teach you here's a bunch of techniques to use here are language patterns to squeeze into what you're doing make sure you do it all in the right place and if you don't you're obviously a failure kind of thing and it it can be very demotivating for people i've met people who have done hypnotherapy courses who i've then seen repeatedly on future training and i'm there because you're supposed to kind of keep practicing and learning and so you want to keep attending trainings to continue to get that practice and be practicing on multiple different people and hopefully learning some new stuff on the way but a lot of these other people on these training courses would say well I'm not really confident yet to see clients and I've been seeing clients since 2001 and yet I was meeting these people I'm not really confident yet seeing clients I don't feel that I can do it well enough. I always forget the techniques. I always forget the language patterns. I always end up sat with the client thinking, am I supposed to use a double bind now? Am I supposed to use a contingent suggestion, a compound suggestion, a double dissociation double bind, a tag question? I don't know what, what patterns I'm supposed to use from minute to minute. And the client's talking to me and it's just overwhelming and I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I try and find scripts, but then I can't find the scripts for the client that I've got. And then the script doesn't work because my client isn't the same as the script and I don't know what to do with that and this is the kind of thing that people would say to me and I would be thinking that's not what you should be doing you're supposed to be a therapist you should be going out there doing therapy I wouldn't want to go to a therapist who essentially would just want think their approach is to read to somebody or to recite a script or to use a bunch of techniques on someone I want a therapist who is client-centered and focused on me as an individual client, who's going to be working with me and has the skill and knowledge to treat what I'm presenting as a problem. So it's important to note, before we get into the main bulk of this, that hypnosis itself isn't therapy. So this is an important point across the whole course, is to understand hypnosis isn't therapy. Hypnosis is a helpful tool, but it isn't actually the therapy. Hypnosis is about narrowing attention, it's about focusing attention and increasing responsiveness so that the therapy that you do is more effective. For example, if I'm doing therapy with someone and we're sat in a room and there's distractions outside and they keep on being distracted by the distractions or while we're talking say it's a topic that they get self-conscious about and so they're now distracted by their self-consciousness meaning they're not engaging with the therapy with me, then that therapy isn't going to be as effective as if I do exactly the same therapy, but this time I talk in a way that's, and communicate in a way that's gaining attention and holding this person's attention and narrowing this person's attention on what is important for them to be focusing on here and now, so that they stop being aware of the distraction, it stops being so important to them. They've got the vague kind of, yeah, I was kind of aware it was out there somewhere, but it's that's not their experience, that's out there somewhere. They're engaged in this dialogue with me, they're engaged in a very almost intimate feeling where it's like, it was just like the two of us are sat in a room together having this chat, they didn't feel self-conscious. So that's where hypnosis comes in, that it's about making it so the therapy is more effective than it would be if you weren't using hypnosis with the therapy. So hypnotherapy is just hypnosis being used with a form of psychological therapy. So you can get, say, a cognitive behavioral hypnotherapist will be using hypnosis with cognitive behavioral therapy. A psychodynamic hypnotherapist will be using hypnosis with psychodynamic therapy. You can get people who are perhaps a Jungian hypnotherapist where they're using hypnosis with Jungian therapy. So any form of therapy you can think of that someone says, yes, I do that type of therapy, you can get a hypnotherapist who that is their approach to therapy, to hypnotherapy. Part of the difficulty from a 
consumer perspective is that people think, oh, hypnotherapy, I'll go and see a hypnotherapist. All hypnotherapists do hypnotherapy. But actually, all hypnotherapists do something different. And then you've got some who, unfortunately, don't even learn therapy at all, but they will still call themselves a hypnotherapist. But all they do is try and suggest problems away. They do kind of what they might term suggestion therapy. And this is rarely successful long term because all they're doing is trying to somehow hope that the individual will take the idea that's being presented and make that a part of who they are. So they'll say things like, you will stop smoking. You will be confident in this situation. They essentially try and dictate to the client what the client has to do and how they have to behave and hope that it sticks. And for people who are very, very responsive to following along to perhaps authority and to what people tell them to do and how, how to be, it may work perhaps short term. Some people may get lucky and just seeing a hypnoth hypnotherapist might have been the push they needed to turn their lives around. So there are people who from a placebo perspective or even just from a I've taken the first step and so I'm ready for change that's all they need but in terms of it being therapy it isn't therapy just trying to suggest problems away so you definitely would want clients to steer clear of anyone who their form of what they class as hypnotherapy is to get someone to close their eyes be hypnotized and then just try and suggest everything away and just try and tell you you will get better 